old school bodybuilding clothing company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. After working hard at the gym, you need a mattress that works as hard as you do. Spinaline has engineered the perfect mattress for you and your active lifestyle. Don't compromise your recovery with inferior sleep. Order your Spinaline mattress today. Hey guys, we're super excited to be here at the LA Fit Expo. It's our third year in a row. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be launching a tasty pastry. It's a low carb Pop Tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs. And we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. RX Television on RXMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions, diet, training, supplementation, IAPB pros, news, whatever's on your mind, it is all on the tables. We now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, uh, big show this past weekend, an ex exciting show with that. The New York Pro, uh, Nick Walker winning the open class, Nathan Epler winning the 212, you had a chance to interview both of them earlier this afternoon. I interviewed Nathan Epler back in 19 when he turned pro, uh, and, you know, he had, I saw the potential there, and he wasn't able to compete last year because of COVID, because he was supposed to do the Indy Pro, and that's, it. you know, he lives in Indy, and it got canceled, and so he kind of just never competed. So it was an interesting interview, considering the fact that he had to take a whole year off but it actually turned out to be better for him because he made a lot of improvements. Nick Walker also freaky improvements. The guy is so mature beyond his years, not only just physique wise, but but emotionally and, and mentally, you know, speaking, that I, I think this guy is ready to be a breakout star. And so it was great to get him back on the show as well. We had interviewed him after he turned pro last year. The guy's a talent, you know. He's it, the funny thing is, you, the the really interesting thing is they both have the same height. Nathan's a two twelve guy. You know, Nick is you know two fifty on stage at, at, as a you know uh, an open guy, and uh, it just goes to show you how people's structures are completely different, even though they can be the same height, and that's why they have different classes. So, two great guys, both ones you know Nick twenty six, Nathan twenty seven. That's the future of our sport, guys like this, and so it was, it's great to see this next generation really making the sport their own now. So both those interviews are going to be released between today and tomorrow on the channel. Let's go to the questions. The first two questions, of course, from the Dave Palumbo experience. After the first question, Dave, what do you think about a cycle for a 60-year-old? You know, 
It, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a loaded question because it really depends on what the person is looking to accomplish. You know, a lot of you know, guys in their 60s that are, you know, are, are competing or working out you know, are using like hormone replacement dosages from 100 to 200 milligrams of testosterone a week. To do a cycle, if you're going to do one, okay, whether it be you know, you've been doing this for years or you want to just try your first cycle you've never done, or maybe you've done cycles in the past, you've taken off you know, 10, 15 years, now you want to get back to it. The key when you're getting older is that your body's you know, digestive detoxification organs are probably not optimal at that point. So you don't want to put a huge load on your body. You also don't want to raise your blood pressure up too high. Because these are things that, that can damage you in your elder years because you're not as re, your body's not as resilient. So I recommend guys sticking with longer acting compounds like testosterone, enanthate or cypine, uh, maybe equipoise or decas, stuff that, that, that doesn't have a lot of, you know, virtually toxic free because it takes a long time for the body to break it down, but also compounds that don't raise blood pressure tremendously. Like, I wouldn't recommend a 60 year old take Trembolone. I mean, it's just. It's, it's overkill, you know, at that point, you know, especially unless you're like competing at the elite level. Um, there's no reason to be using Tremble. And there's also no reason to be taking like Anadrols and Dianabol pills because they're really toxic to the body. Um, a little growth hormone obviously is regenerative. You know, too much growth hormone can raise blood pressure again. So we want to, you know, watch that, you know, probably stay around the two IU per day, you know, mark. Also, we want to watch as you get older, you know, blood sugar control is not as good. So GH can certainly raise blood sugars. So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So you want to be checking blood pressure. You want to be checking, you know, blood sugars. And uh, I think that that's, you know, and obviously cholesterol profiles because sometimes the anabolics can raise, you know, LDLs, which is the bad cholesterol carriers, and lower the good cholesterol carriers, HDLs. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen as well. And then, of course, you want to take your protective micronutrients, you know, your V-mineralized, your omega lies for your essential fats and essential uh, vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. If you do that, I think it can be done safely. But I, like I said, you gotta you gotta take away the mindset. Hey, hey, I'm gonna win the Mr. Olympia contest because you don't need to take those, you know, those excessive dosages. I should say. Second question again from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. Uh, very formal the guy calls you David. I've been doing a one hour of cardio. Do you feel like you get more benefit out out of an hour straight, or break it up like thirty minutes faster in the morning and thirty minutes after a workout? Anyone who called me David is probably European because they're much, they're way more proper than us Americans, right? <laughs> I you know I um I like to break up the cardio if if you have the ability to do that, meaning that if you're not working a full time job and you have kids and stuff like that, and you can you know do a half hour in the morning, you can do a half hour at night, or some guys will do forty minutes in the morning and then after they train they'll do the other twenty minutes. It seems to be better, and especially when you're really low body fat, an hour of cardio or or more which you might have to do to get in shape is, is, is pretty excessive on the, you know, it's pretty taxing on the body because you become really depleted and you get, I remember when I used to do cardio, I would get really hungry, you know, while I was doing it. You could drink all the water you want, it doesn't take away the hunger after a while. So if you can break it into two sessions, it seems to work better. Um, if, if you can't, you got to do an hour straight after you weight train, then, then you, you make it work. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But if you have the option, I, I think that the, the breaking it into two sessions seems to be better. Let's go to our Instagram questions again. If you're not already following us, our handle is official underscore RX muscle. If you're watching us for the first time on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss any of our shows, upcoming segments. As we mentioned just a little while ago, we have upcoming interviews uh, to go live with Nick Walker, who won the open class at the New York Pro, clinched his long weighted Olympia debut, and Nathan Epler. Uh, 212 star in the making, one of the 212 class at the New York Pro. Uh, all new episode of the After Hours podcast as well as a full breakdown of the New York Pro on this week's episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. If you like what you're watching, hit the like button below, comment, obviously that it helps. And as always, we thank you for your support. So now, Dave, I'm going to go in a bit of a different direction here because <laughs> we've got a different, couple of different questions about something that everybody is talking about today bodybuilding world and otherwise and that is crypto so i guess the crypto market has taken a major major tumble today are, are you invested at all in bitcoin or, or doge or the new one what was it uh a shiba inu i guess are, are you into that at all you know back in the 90s i was um day trading stocks because i had a lot of i was training if you remember the wolf of wall street 
Well, of course. All right. Yeah. The, those guys, the Jordan Belfort guys that worked for him, I was training all those guys. They were all driving around Ferraris and they all had all these stock tips. So they were always feeding me stock tips. So I, they said, open a Charles Schwab account, go online and, and just day trade. You know, you don't even need a, a, a you know, a person to, you don't even need a, a broker. So I was going on there and doing that. I was making money because these guys had great tips. And then all of a sudden, if you remember, the market crashed. And I lost everything. I lost all the money I had made because I was greedy. Because I wasn't, I'm like, I'm not going to sell yet. I'm, it's going up. It's going up. It's going up. So I made a few bucks, but then I wound up losing it all. So I'm like, you know what? I, I, I don't gamble because I don't, I don't like to lose. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a bad loser <laughs> in, in that sense. I don't want to lose money. So um, when cryptocurrency came around, and I know Chris Cito had bought some Bitcoin and stuff like that. And Jay, I think, bought some. And they sold it, made money. He, he's like, you should buy some. I'm like, you know what? I'm not buying it because I know what's going to happen. It's going to go up, 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 and then one day you're going to wake up and it's going to be in the toilet bowl and everything that you invest is going to be gone. So I, I never got involved in it. And, you know, you, that's what's, it's like the stock market again. It's like you, you're, the reason why it goes up is because all these people are buying into it. And then once one person who, who's in the know sells, the thing crashes. And so I, I, don't, I don't like to take, I'd rather bank, bank on myself. That was the, I hit a point in my life. I had lost some money on the gym I had invested in. I said, you know what? From now on, I'm only investing in myself. I'll take the money that I would normally give someone else for their business, and I'll just invest it into what I'm doing. You know, because I, I know that there's no, there's no chance of me not doing my job or putting in the time and giving 100% to what I'm doing. So this way, I can't lose, you know? And, that, and that's, been my, that's been my philosophy for the last 15 years or so. Invest in yourself. Start your own business. Take the money you would give to someone else or putting cryptocurrency or the stock market and invest in a business that you believe in and that you're going to put a lot of time and effort into. And if you do that, you, you can't lose. You can, you can, your investment will not fail. Well, let me ask you a follow-up to that because it's another one that um, <laughs> tough to tell when people are joking about these things or if they're actually serious. And um, there seems to be a coin for everything now, and it seems to be a coin backed by everything. I, I don't know, Dave. I know it's a totally different topic altogether, yeah. but NFTs. Um, there seems to be NFTs for every industry. Well, do you think bodybuilding should be in the crypto game? Some sort of a bodybuilding-related coin? Uh, somebody <laughs> joked we called it the Palumbo coin. Would you ever be interested in something like that? We should that? have some steroid currency, you know, so you can buy your, your steroids <laughs> with, you know. Uh, this is the Dianabol coin. You get a hundred Dianabol pills with this. 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 Who knows? I don't know. It. it, it we're such a, a nation of consumers, right? We love to buy shit. I mean, it's. It's. Look, I'm and I'm just as bad. I, I go on Facebook or Instagram, and all these ads pop up. You know those ads that pop up like late at night when you're on. You know when like one in the morning, twelve at night. Buy this shirt. Buy this bracelet. Buy this toy. I buy everything. I'm like a like an like an addict. I'm like, oh, my son would love that, or oh, that T-shirt's really nice, and I buy all that stuff because because we're a nation of consumers. We love doing it. So I I, I don't think anything is a bad idea. Um, it's it's how you market it, right? I mean, sure, let's get a bodybuilding coin. Let's get a Dorian Yates coin or something. Like that. Yates coin. <laughs> um, let's get back to the bodybuilding related question. So. Interestingly enough, Dave, I don't know um, what states this is in effect for today, but I guess there seems to be, especially in New York, and uh, we have another another uh, uh, member of our audience from the Netherlands saying this as well. So it seems like a lot of restrictions are being lifted today. I don't know specifically why today, but right. it seems to be in a lot of locations, gym restrictions in particular are being lifted today. So in New York, as an example, gyms have been open but now the mask mandate is being lifted. So uh, to go into the gym, you don't need to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. So we are getting a lot of questions about returning to the gym. This is a question or a line of questions that we got a lot of during the pandemic. Um, so again, for somebody who has not worked out, it's been a year or plus without training, is the muscle that's been lost easier to put back on or will it be just as difficult to build up or more so? And I guess if you want to throw in just again, a primer for those returning to the gym for the first time, what your tips would be. It's, it's interesting that all of a sudden, even though we know that the vaccine is not 100%, it seems all of a sudden like the government's saying, well, if you get vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask anymore, which is, which is a nice way of them selling the vaccine to you so that you can go get that, right? Well, I don't have to wear a mask, I'm gonna get a vaccine. But you know what the truth is, you can still get COVID. So 
I'm, you know, I'm a little, it sounds like a manipulative tactic, but to answer your question, which was how fast will the muscle come back? Much faster than you think. Uh, in other words, if you weighed 250 pounds, okay, and, and most of that was muscle, and you went down to 220 because you haven't been training in a gym and you've been training in your basement, um, and maybe you weren't using any anabolics because you figured it was a waste, you probably put that weight back on in six to eight weeks, maybe faster, you know, depending on what kind of a responder you, you are. But obviously, if you were to try to go from 220 to 250, having never weighed 250 before, that would take a long time. So muscle returns. The reason why we have a, something called a phenomenon called muscle memory is that when you create new tissue or, or grow muscle tissue, you're basically taking stem cells or we call them satellite cells and turn them into, in, we, we, we make them actually become differentiated into, into muscle tissue. So from nothing, these stem cells get converted to muscle tissue. They get added to the existing myofibers and then they get bigger in size. Well, those, what, what, different, what defines a new cell okay, as opposed to just making the existing cells bigger, okay, is a nuclei. There's a nucleus in these new cells. So we're adding nuclei to these myofibers. Um, they get bigger and smaller, obviously. As you detrain or stop working out, those, the muscle fibers get smaller, but those nuclei are still there. So when you go back to working out, you're basically just basically blowing up the existing you know, nuclei or cells that have been there but you still have those additional cells there. So that's why the muscle comes back much quicker. It's not like you have to try to you know, go through that whole process of building muscle again. You're basically just blowing up what was previously there. And that's what we call muscle memory. It's really just a phenomenon because we've added new nuclei via satellite cell or, or stem cell uh, differentiation over the course of however long you've been training prior to the detraining process. Uh, I don't know if that was too complicated or if people understand what I'm talking about, but it should take, like I said, if you're Kevin Lavroni, it takes four weeks. <laughs> if you're a normal person, it'll take six to eight weeks to get back to what you were at. Let's go to B Winery 20. Best way to detox your liver, and does apple cider vinegar work for that process? Yeah, apple cider vinegar is a good al alkalinizing agent for the body because of the, um, especially the. You have to get the unfiltered apple cider vinegar because it's the it's the pulp in there that actually acts as the. Uh, alkalinizing agent but as far as detoxification of the liver goes um, the key to letting the liver detoxify itself is to number one reduce inflammation around the liver and then open up the liver bile ducts because the ducts that lead out of the liver is that carries the junk out of there a lot of times when the liver gets stressed out from whatever if you're drinking too much alcohol and it's having to work too hard or you're taking a lot of anabolics maybe oral short acting stuff is that the liver gets inflamed, it pinches off those bile ducts, now the liver's trying to get rid of all the stuff that it's breaking down, it can't leave the liver, it backs up into the liver, the liver swells more, and then you can get fibrotic tissue laid down and then the, those cells become non-functional. Um, milk thistle, okay, silymarin, that's the, 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 the chemical name of it, that seems to have a really good, you know, number one re infl inflammatory reducing effect on the liver, but also a dilating effect on these uh, bile ducts, which enable them to then detox better. So if you're going to take a if you're going to take something to help, you know, re, you know, reduce, you know, toxicity in the body and and aid in the liver, you should definitely have something that has silymarin or or milk thistle in it. Likewise, one of the the main antioxidants that the liver uses is glutathione. Now, most people can't get injectable glutathione. It's expensive, you know, if you can afford it, titanmedicalcenter.com sells it that I mean I highly recommend that I use it every day. Um, but if you can't oral N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor to glutathione, can be used because glutathione is not orally absorbable, but, but N-acetylcysteine is. So um, I sell a product on DavePalumba.com called Liver Stable. It's made by Bill Llewellyn, and it contains, you know, silymarin, and it contains N-acetylcysteine. And you use that formula, you know, if you, some guys use it year-round, which that's kind of what I do, but even if you used it a couple months out of the year, you know, you're going to help your liver dump some of that toxin out and reduce inflammation around the tubules and make sure the liver can detoxify. And that, that's the whole process. And there's no more complexity to it than what I just explained. It's allowing the liver to get rid of the junk in it rather than it backing up into the liver and causing inflammation in the liver and the liver getting swelled up and enlarged. So if you're going for, you know, if you go for an ultrasound of your liver and they tell you, well, you know, your, your bile ducts are small or blocked or, you know, 
you have uh, an enlarged liver. A lot of times it's not the cells that get bigger, it's, it's just that it's inflamed. So if you're gonna use anabolics on a regular basis, um, you should absolutely consider using a product like Liver Stable. Let's go to Bowen Russell. Dave, I suffered a heart attack due to a genetic heart defect when I was 27. There was no lasting side effects and the defect was fixed. I'm on one aspirin and one statin per day and that's all. My question is, is it safe for me to take supplements like test boosters or pre-workouts? Yeah, I mean, if, if you're, I would have to believe if, you, if you're controlled, you know, um, and I don't know what the defect was that was fixed in his heart, so he didn't really state that, so it's hard for me to say. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't go crazy on pre-workouts that have a lot of stimulants in it, but there's a lot of pre-workouts out there that have, you know, a moderate amount, you know, 100, 200 milligrams of caffeine is not going to be terrible if you're only doing it once a day. Um, obviously, you might, if, if you have a heart issue that, that, you know, like high blood pressure and stuff like that, you might consider not using a non, you might consider using a non-stimulant, you know, pre-workout. But by and far, the pre-workouts really shouldn't be too bad because they do have a vasodilating effect on, this, on the body, which usually helps the lower blood pressure in certain circumstances, assuming that the stimulant you know, amounts are not that high. Um, what else did he say that he was, oh, testosterone. You know, as long as testosterone is not raising your blood pressure too high, I think you're fine. And also, if you're on a statin, it probably means that you have really high LDL cholesterol. You should be on a product like Omega Lyse, which is high in essential fatty acids. You should be on a fiber supplement like Fiber Lyse, which is gonna help lower LDL cholesterol by binding up these LDL cholesterol salts and pulling them out of the body. Um, that's gonna help work with the statin. And you, you know what, in some cases, if, if it might not even need a statin after a while. If you lose some body fat and you get on these products uh, on a religious basis, um, taking HRT levels of testosterone are probably fine, like 100 milligrams a week. Um, taking these testosterone boosters, like my product Testalyze, and there's other ones out there as well, are relatively safe because most of them just work to manipulate your natural levels of testosterone. So that shouldn't be a problem. Let's go to Mr. Motivation Fitness. I have not come off cycle for like two years. What will happen if I don't, and what is the best way to do it? You're going to die. No, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, what? Why would you want to stay on a site after a while if you just stay on the cycle all the time it doesn't even do anything? So now you're taking all this, these drugs and you're putting your, your body under a toxic load potentially and you're potentially taking, you know, raising blood pressure and you're not even getting any muscle gains out of it because you're on the same thing or you're on steroids for so long your body just is not responsive. So it actually would be serve you to come off them now, resensitize those androgen receptors so that when you do go back on, you're going to start getting results again. If you're just, you know, if you're if you're at a status quo, a status quo where you're not gaining or losing in your same weight, you're better off just staying on HRT levels of 100 milligrams of testosterone a week. At that point, it's the same thing. You can maintain your body weight at that without the side effects. Um, if you want to start growing again, you, you should probably consider cleaning out. Do some HCG. Do some clomid for two weeks of each of those, and then stay off for you know the four, you know the two to four weeks, and then go back on and see how your body responds. Let's go to Alex Williamson. Do you think we will ever get legal uh, anabolic in the USA? Again, I know you did an episode of, I believe it was Iron Rage last year. We were talking yeah. about, was it was the state of Washington, right? That legalized Oregon. everything. Oregon. And you wondered Oregon. if that would lead to that kind of a rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, Oregon, theoretically, uh, the personal use there of uh, anabolics even, because all drugs have been legalized there, essentially. So you really can't get arrested for them. You know... I think that we're going to get to a point where we realize that we're over-policing ourselves. We have too many people in jail for, for dumb drug sales that are non-violent in nature. Now, violent drug offenders you know, should be put in jail because those are violent people. But there's a lot of non-violent people that were trying to make a few bucks, pay for their own drugs. That's wasting jail space. So I think at some point, someone's just going to get sick of this whole thing and they're going to run, a, you know, you know, their campaign is going to be Let's just legalize drugs and make them under the you know the auspices of a you know of a doctor. Put them under their care. If you want to get an anabol, a if you want a bigger biceps, you want to go to your doctor, your your whoever the whatever doctor it's going to be at the end of the, in this time, your cosmetic uh, enhancement doctor, maybe I guess plastic surgeon. Uh, you want to go there and get bigger biceps? They'll write you a prescription for some testosterone, and some Decker, you know, or maybe some Anabar and. 
Uh, they'll monitor you, they'll do blood work on you, and uh, just like the hormone replacement clinics do. Now, you want to renew your prescription, you want to get another one from us, you better pass your blood work. Your blood work better come back good, your blood pressure better come back good. If it's not, I'm not writing you another prescription. And I think, it, I think it's going to get to that point where, um, where at least, you know, you, maybe you can go and get a legal prescription. I think it's going to be more acceptable because people are going to be, what the heck are we worried about? The problem is we live in this puritanical society. Think about who came over on the Mayflower. They were Puritans. Everyone was like uptight about everything. So from sex to drugs to this to that. So it doesn't, you know, of course we're so restrictive here. Go to Amsterdam. Everything's legal there and they don't have any crime there. Prostitution's legal. Drugs are legal. You can go into a, the, the bars sell marijuana in there. The, 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 the 7-Eleven sell mushrooms, you know, where you can hallucinate on mushrooms. So, and there's no, there's no crime there. So... I think we might get to a point like that. I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime, but I think we will eventually get there. Go to Andy Paredes. Um, how should I train in the gym the week leading up to the show? Volume, intensity, reps, compounds, isolation. If you want to share uh, how you would train leading into a show, then I guess how you would advise your clients. I um, believe it. I really didn't train my, change my training very much uh, leading up to a show. I continued to do all the same exercises, squats and deadlifts and all that stuff. What I did was if, I, if, I, if my strength wasn't, quite, like let's say I was inclined bench pressing, you know, uh, 405 for, for six reps in the off season. Maybe, you know, I wasn't able to do 405 anymore because it was just too heavy and I was depleted and I wasn't, and I was afraid of, you know, tearing something. So maybe I dropped down to, you know, 315 or 365 for four to six reps. So what I did was I lightened the weight so that I could still handle the weight with good form, but I didn't purposely lighten weight and I purposely didn't do higher volume and I purposely didn't drop all the mass building movements just for these, you know, machine movements because that would alter my physique. That would that would all that hard work and now I'm changing how I'm training. Of course I'm going to lose muscle from that. So I never changed anything. I just lightened the weights a little bit. And maybe did a couple more reps if because I, I just maybe I just wasn't as strong because I was in a depleted state and I had lost 30 pounds or something like that. So you, there's certainly a correlation between how much you weigh and how strong you are. And so I, I, I kind of let my body dictate what it can do. I might have incorporated a couple more shaping movements in and maybe a few more machines in there to really kind of hit, you know, target some muscles that were hard to hit, you know, with, comp mat, with big compound movements. And that's what I did. I didn't change much at all because when you start changing what you're doing, you change your physique. And usually it's for the worse. You know, if you're squatting, you know, 500 pounds every week in, in the off season and then six weeks before the show, you decide that only, I'm only going to squat 225 because, uh, and I'm going to do more reps, you, you, you're probably going to lose some muscle. And uh, because now your body doesn't have to, doesn't need as much muscle to do 225 every week as it did to need to do 500 you know, every week. So don't do stupid things. Don't make drastic changes. Just be safe so you don't get injured. And that's the best advice I can give you. Let's go to Coach Bishow for front delts. Uh, front raises worth it or presses enough? I always liked front raises because I really felt it like really isolate on my front delt. And I would do them with my palm down. I would do them with palm like neutral position. And I felt like I was hitting slightly different areas of the front delt. You can actually, if you put your finger on here and you turn your hand like this, you'll feel the delt move. And um, so I would just do different versions of that. And I found like it just gave me a, a slightly better capped look. Um, a lot of guys, some guys will do upright rows, you know, wider for front delts and stuff like that. And I, I just, you know what, th that movement always really hurt my shoulder joint. So I really never really was able to really capitalize on that. It's an awkward movement and it's probably not good for your shoulders. Um, but I, I really like cable cable front raises, dumbbell front raises. Um, I see some guys doing them with a bar, but I always felt like one side was a little stronger than the other, so I didn't want to kind of throw my body out of balance. So I always did everything unilateral, and, and it seemed to work well. I didn't do a lot of sets, maybe two, three sets um, during my shoulder workout. I thought the meat, meat and potatoes of my shoulder workout really was the pressing. You know, the presses built everything, side laterals. But the front delts, it's nice to kind of hit a couple sets in there just to really, you know, really fry them. Time for a couple more questions. Let's go to Marhun Aziz. Uh, you know, I mean, as much as we talk about cycles, mistakes, do's and don'ts, not sure if we've ever really touched on do's and don'ts of a first cycle. So for those looking to embark upon the first cycle, your do's and don'ts. 
don't overdo the first cycle because anything you take, you're going to grow from initially and really well. I mean, you could literally take probably Anivar and Winstrel tabs and, you, and you're going to put some size on as a man because your body's fresh. You know, your, your metabolism, I mean, your receptors are fresh. That's probably the, the, that's probably the best advice I can give you as far as, you know, once again, don't look at what guys that have been competing and, and using anabolics for five or six years have been doing because that doesn't apply to you. Once again, like I said, I'll reiterate again, anything you take is going to work. So you don't need to use an atomic bomb, okay, to blow up an ant hill that's in the, in the front of your property because there's a million ants all over the place. You can use probably, you know, the hose and that would probably do the job. And if the hose doesn't work, a small little firecracker probably would blow up the ant hill pretty well, right? So a lot of people overdo it. They're like, okay, I want to be huge. I want to be like uh, Ronnie Coleman uh, one day, but I, I need to do it by uh, six weeks from now because I'm going on vacation. And so they go on a load of gear, they eat a ridiculous amount of food, and then they just look like a bloated mess. So don't, don't make the mistake of, number one, thinking you're going to make insane progress just because, you know, you, you got a little arm pump going on. And also, don't go crazy. Understand that this is a process that's going to take place over years, not over days. Time for one more question from Ryan the Warrior. Any chance of interviewing Craig Titus? I don't think he will be hard to track down. Well, we know where he is. He's in Clark County Detention Center. <laughs> um, here's the deal. You know, Craig is a pathological you know, liar. So I don't even want to give him a voice. You know, he, he was, you know, whether he killed, you know, you know, Melissa James or, or Kelly did, or they did it together, or it was an accident. The bottom line is that someone was killed. And out of respect for Melissa and her, her mother and her family, I don't think it's right to give Craig a, a platform to, you know, talk about, you know, the lies that he's been working over the last 15 years to, to build up in his head. I don't know, you know. I, we're not going to hit, he's not going to come on here and give me some amazing revelation. Hey, you know what? I killed her. This is how I did it. I'm so sorry. It was an accident. He's not doing that. He's just going to talk, you know, crap. And so it's, it's not worth giving him a, a platform to do that because I think it's disrespectful to her family. You know, if he had kind of said to me, hey, Dave, and wrote me a letter, because I was writing for him to him a couple times. If he wrote me a letter and said, you know what, I, I, I want to go on the record. I want to tell everyone what happened, you know, the, right, the, the truth of what happened. And, and uh, I went back to him and said, well, what is the truth? And he told me what it was. And, and I thought that that was something that people wanted to hear and that it would, have been, it would create a healing you know, of sorts for the, her family, I would put them on. But that's never going to happen. So, um, you know, I don't know if we'll ever see Craig get out of jail. Knowing him, he's, a, he's like a cockroach. He probably will get out when he's in his 70s. Um, where he'll go or what he'll do, I have no idea. You never know with him, you know. He, will he try to get back into the bodybuilding world or in some sense? I don't know. You know, Craig is an unpredictable character. Um, I'm sure by then he'll be very institutionalized, but... I don't think it's, like I said, I don't think it's respectful to her family and to what happened to even give him a voice in this industry. That's going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. A reminder right now on the channel, all new episode of the After Hours podcast and Heavy Muscle Radio going up between today and tomorrow. Interviews with uh, Nathan Epler and, of course, Nick Walker, who both won their class at this past weekend's New York Pro. For Tyler Shore and Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.